Let's see how we take a sales order over the phone from a retail customer. We're going to go through seven steps. First of all, we'll search for the customer, then create a new customer because we won't find them on the system. We'll add items to the sales order, we'll take payment, we'll fulfill the sales order, which creates a shipment, and then it's the shipment that we then pack and ship, and then finally we invoice the order. So the first thing we need to do is search for the customer. Jane has phoned up, so I'll just search for Jane in the customer search at the top right, and we'll see that there's no customer called Jane. So let's add a new customer. If she had a company, we'd put it in here, and we'll choose salutation, first name, and last name. It's really important to add an email address as well, because this is what Brightpearl will use when matching downloaded sales from online channels, and it's also what you'll use to send emails to her later. You could also add other information such as telephone number and cell phone. There's more information you can add at the bottom, but whilst she's on the phone, you probably don't want to spend too much time capturing information. So let's move on to the addresses. Enter her address here. If she wanted this order shipped to a different address, you could put a delivery address in here. In the financial tab, it's important to check that she's on the right price list. And this is a retail sale, so we've chosen the retail price list. The defaults you've got here are chosen by the settings in your contact setup screen. Under the Save Changes button, we'll just choose Save and Order. This opens up a new sales order on a status that you've chosen in your sales workflow. There are no products on it, so what we're going to do is just search for an item here. Jane wants to buy a t-shirt for her husband, which is going to be the Men's Distressed T-shirt in large. And we can see here that we've got 13 in stock, 13 on hand, and the retail price for this is 19.99. Clicking that adds it to the order. I also want to add some shipping. and I don't have a product for shipping, so I'm just going to add a miscellaneous line item. Let's click Add Row and just type shipping in here. We'll charge her £5 for shipping. I'll choose a channel on the sale so we can report by channel later, which will be Telephone Sales Retail, and then Save Changes. The next thing I want to do is take payment. So I'll run the payment through my credit card system. We've taken payment into our credit card account. We've processed it on a separate PDQ machine. So let's allocate this payment to the order. Scrolling down, we can see that the order has now been marked as paid. Typically, at this point, we'd probably move it to in progress. Now, because we have inventory, the row is green, which means that we can create the shipment. If we didn't have any inventory, we'd have to put this order on back order. And there's a separate video which shows you what to do if items are not in stock. But because they are, we can fulfill, and let's ship it later. If the customer was going to pick it up right away, you could mark it as ship now. But because we're going to ship it later this afternoon, let's fulfill and ship later. We can see that the order is now fulfilled because the little block here has gone green. All stock items are fulfilled. We can see that we've got a goods out note, which is effectively the packing note. This, of course, can be templated in any way you like. And it's the shipment, not the order, that's printed, picked, packed and shipped. So I could print this, pick it, pack it and ship it as four separate stages. But for now, let's just pack it. We'll choose pack, choose a shipping method. We'll go standard shipping and then enter a reference. The goods out note has now been marked as packed. The inventory has not yet been updated because the order has not left our warehouse. Finally, at the end of the day, we ship the goods out note, which we can either do from here or in bulk at the end of the day when the truck turns up. That's now fully shipped the sale. So if we go back to the order, 105, we can see that the truck has gone coloured, which means that all stock items have been shipped. This means it's OK to now invoice it. So let's click Invoice, which will lock the order and put all the transactions into the accounting system. It also marks the sale as completed because I've set my system up to move sales automatically to complete when I invoice them. And that's all you need to do for a retail sale. Let's have a look at what's been going on in the background. If we have a look at the accounting tab, there's no balance on her account because we took a payment and then we raised an invoice. If we click financial history, we'll see both of these transactions on her audit trail. So first of all, we took a sales receipt, that was the payment. And then secondly, we created a sales invoice. 
and the two match against each other, so she doesn't owe us any money and we don't owe her any money. We've also shipped some goods on the sale, which was uh, order 105. If we have a look at the inventory audit trail for that product, have a look at the t-shirt. It was the distressed in large. Let's have a look at the actions, view stock audit trail. We'll see that the sale at the top here, number 105, large, is effectively one item being shipped from the main warehouse. So we can see the inventory has also been updated for her sale. Let's have a look at the recent sales. Well, we can see her sale here. It's all shipped, completed. There's an invoice reference for it, and it's all been marked as paid. So that shows you end-to-end -end creation and shipping of a retail sale. Thanks for watching.